Hi, so today we are going to be talking about how to self myofascial release your hip complex. Okay, so who? Who would get a benefit out of working out the hip flexor? Um, I mean, pretty much anybody, but primarily people who sit a lot. So desk, computer work. Um, also people who drive commute a lot, so planes, trains. Um, so sitting, primarily being in the hip flex position. Then you have um, kind of different situations like leg discrepancy, um, kind of weakness and balances, um, and also athletes, runners, cyclists, um, and also weightlifting. Um, but anything that has to do with a lot of action in the hips, like I said, pretty much everybody. Um, so if you're also feeling back pain, uh, it might not seem very intuitive, but that has to do with a lot of the hip as well. So if you do feel back pain, kind of achiness in the hips, sharp pain sometimes when you're walking, running, going up and down stairs, um, you'd probably benefit from myofascial release in the hip complex. So that's the who. So what we're going to be working on is going to be primarily the hip flexor group. So it's the muscles that help you lift your knee up towards your chest or a different way to look at it is helping you bring your torso forward. Basically just kind of closing off this angle of the body. So the muscles that are involved with that. So that's kind of the big picture. Then we've got the specific muscles um, that make up the hip flexor group. And I'm sure we're gonna be posting them up somewhere so you can actually see it. Uh, <laughs> so what that's gonna be is the psoas and the rectus femoris. Those two are gonna be like probably two of the more powerful ones that help flex the hip. But the psoas, there's the iliacus and then the iliopsoas, that makes up the ones that are just right in, inside the hip. It's a deeper one. And the psoas actually anchors into your lumbar spine. So that's when sometimes your low back can be hurting after sitting for a while. Um, so then, like I had said before, part of the quad, the rectus femoris in the front here, um, we're gonna be working a little bit of the tensor fascia lata, which is going to be kind of above your IT band. So a lot of you might know the iliotibial band or tract IT band um, tends to be tight on a lot of people. So all of this here and then a little bit going into the inside of the leg. So those muscles specifically, they're an adductor group, ADD, you're adding towards the in, inside of the body. So we're gonna be working those specific muscles too. So where, like I'm showing you here, it's gonna be more on the front of the body, but you kind of go out to the side a little bit too and then come a bit, a bit in. Um, but you wanna work, whenever you're doing self myofascial release, you really wanna focus on the entire length of the muscle. So that means a lot up here where it anchors into the hip bone um, and then some into the femur all the way through so this longest strongest bone here the femur and then some around the kneecap or the patella so there's going to be attachments all down through here of these muscles when so when do you want to do some of these self myofascial release techniques um pretty much any time is probably good um but i usually recommend to my clients to incorporate some sort of heat into it, whether that is externally placed on it, um, <laughs> like a, a heat pack or a heat pad. Um, sometimes people like to roll and stretch after they take a shower or a bath, um, or other people like more dynamic, active ways of warming up. So maybe they'll do a little bit of like a warm up before they do it. Um, or they'll roll after their warm-up and then do their exercise or maybe roll after their exercise. 
but I usually recommend doing it on warm tissue. It seems like it takes it better. Who, what, where, when, why? So why you would want to do this? Um, well, one main reason is you don't have enough time to go see your massage therapist or maybe the money, or it could be like right now where everyone is self-isolating um, and social distancing. So if you can't make it in to see a manual therapist, this is really the next best thing. Um, and also if you're in a lot of pain or a lot of discomfort and it's just a while until you can get in to see somebody. You don't really want to be, you know, laying around with no options. So you can try these out so that it can relieve some of your discomfort. Who, what, where, when, why, how? So the main reason. Um, so how to do it. I usually um, start with the gentlest way possible. So for the hip, sometimes what will help is just laying off kind of the edge of your bed or your couch and just letting gravity pull it back. So you could just be just laying on the edge here and just kind of let it drop down. So sometimes it could be hurting and be in so tight that even this is a little painful. So you can just kind of ease into it and breathe. Um, you can kind of scoot your toe back further and kind of deepen it if you want to. Um, but that's a good way to start. You can start moving it back and forth so you can lift it and bring it down. So doing some easy stuff like that um, to start off with is good. Okay, so next we move on to the foam roller. Um, so usually I recommend to my clients any of these things you could probably do against the wall too if it's too much to have gravity and your body weight on it. Um, but for the hips and the quads, I feel like going up against the wall is kind of difficult for these. So, um, I like kind of these half foam rollers cause then you can just go one at a time. Um, if having like balancing yourself on both is too much, you can kind of go one at a time and you can kind of use this other side. Like even just doing this, I can't really get all of my weight on it. Um, like this, so I feel really safe right now. Um, so you can just kind of go into it as far as your body feels comfortable. You don't want to go too far overdo it because you can't damage the, t the tissue. Um, so just kind of do what feels good for you. So you can roll kind of back and forth. You can even kind of move your leg a little bit. So with some of these things, like this is kind of what I do with my clients too is use a lot of movement with it. Um, so you can turn your toes in and out and you can get at different angles. Um, and then you can slowly kind of work your way down. So this, you can kind of hit some of those adductor muscles we were talking about. And then you can also get right on that front quad muscle, which is that um, rectus femoris. And then you can, go slowly onto the outside, and that's gonna hit more of that tensor fascia lata um, and that IT band going down the side. So you can maneuver yourself up the foam roller to get all the way down to the bottom of your quad, and you can get all that stuff down there too. So that's how I would foam roll out the hip flexor quad area. You can do, kind of just feel, feel what's right for you. You can kind of move around everywhere with these. You can even hit your glutes on it, um, which I would probably recommend anyways with this hip, hip complex. But I like using the ball better for these. So again, I like to start against the wall if being on the ground is just too much for it. So. The foam roller has a wider surface area, so it kind of distributes the pressure more evenly. This has a more narrow surface area on a ball. Um, a lacrosse ball works really good too for these. Um, so and there's a lot of different like mobility balls that have lots of spikes and stuff on it too. So whatever you want to do. Um, but a tennis ball works good too. 
So what you just what you do for um, like this kind of outside hip area here. So this is where that tensor fascia lata is going to be, the TFL. So what I'll do for this is I will kind of pinch that against the wall and just kind of lightly on my toe, the one that's actually being worked on. Um, and then I'll just kind of twist that in and out with most of my weight on the leg that's not being worked on, okay? So you're just gonna kind of lean your weight against it and move around. So this will mimic like kind of my knuckles when I'm digging <laughs> into the side of my clients. And then a lot of times either I'm moving their leg back and forth to get the same kind of movement, or I'll ask them to do it for me. So this will basically mimic the same kind of thing. Um, so then you can keep moving forward, right? I guess it'd be easier if I showed you this way. Because then if you have a corner of the wall, this works really well. So you'll get it kind of right in the corner here so that you can kind of get around that wall and you can move into um, this line here more above your adductors. Um, so that's a, a good one here to kind of dig around this area where you get a lot of uh, fascia bunching and it feels kind of sticky. So just kind of being able to work that out that's where I would spend a lot of time with my clients too. Um, and another part that works really well is more down here. Um, these are attachment sites to some of those muscles and they'll get a little sticky as well. Um, so getting a ball on it, you can, if you're really good, balance out. Like you can kind of put quite a bit of pressure and do it that way. Or if you feel good, you can do it this way too. Um, you could even use a golf ball if you wanted to. That's pretty firm. But, you know, you're binge watching Netflix or something and just dig into it. Um, so that's really good um, for the hip, the glutes. So th that's usually what I would use for um, the glutes would be like my fist or my elbow. So again, smaller surface area than a foam roller. You could start with a foam roller and kind of work it out, get used to it a little bit, desensitize it. But getting the ball and doing the same kind of movement stuff, I like using movement with it because you can get at the different angles of the muscle attachments. Um, and when you find kind of a, a tender spot or a spot that really feels like it kind of gets stuck, you can spend some more time there. You can also do um, what's called like what, the figure four? And you can do that with it. You can go all along the edges of your hip to where they attach. Um, that all feels pretty good. So then we're moving on to another kind of digging out rolling kind of tool. So this is, a, oh, it's called the stick. There's lots of different versions of these, but this is kind of good for some of these muscle rolling stuff. But what I wanted to show you guys for this one is a psoas release. So you could also take something heavy, um, like some of you athletes might have some trophies, <laughs> um, or I don't know, maybe a small kid can stick on you or something. I'm gonna use this as a pillow. Okay, so you could take this tennis ball or lacrosse ball and you can put something heavy on it and it'll kind of sink into your psoas. So if you look at the diagram of the psoas, you'll see that it goes kind of through the abdominal cavity and it attaches into the lumbar spine vertebrae. So it's in pretty deep down here. So you need something that'll go in there. That's where the stick comes in. I was also thinking maybe if you're at home, maybe you can use like a I don't know, the wooden handle of like a spatula or spoon or something, um, a broomstick. So yeah, you just kind of slip right on the inside of your hip bone, that front hip bone, and then kind of angle it in and kind of put pressure. So having your knee bent kind of puts it in slack. Um, and then uh, just breathing, when you breathe out, 
Let it sink in. And you'll feel a little bit of resistance, but it usually feels good. Um, and then, so when you lean that stick in towards your belly button line, you'll hook into the inside of the bowl of your pelvis. Then you'll be hitting more of the iliacus. So that's the other muscle that's part of the hip flexor too. So you can go in, you're playing some air <laughs> Okay, laughing kind of helps too, because then it kind of contracts those muscles and it's like a ART kind of situation. So again, like with all of them, I like doing some movement. So moving your leg kind of in and out, down. So pointing the toes, angling those in and out. We'll get into it. This is really what'll help out low back pain. So if that's your main um, uh, complaint, if it's right, it's like a sharp pain, kind of right on the spine, right off on either direction, then I give you a hint as to which um, psoas might be tugging on it. Now, the psoas might not be the number one culprit. It could be like three or four. Um, it could be that the quads are really tight that's binding everything up. And then the psoas is just kind of the last piece to go kind of thing. Um, so it really wouldn't hurt to just try and loosen up everything in this area. Um, so that's the stick. I would learn to really love to hate this thing. This is a good one. Um, so then, um, but if you can't really handle kind of breathing and breaking up some of that tough tissue, scar tissue, fascia by it, that's just too much, then just doing some movement, if that feels better for you, um, is a good thing to do too. So stretching, you have um, some more dynamic movement stretching. There's also some active isolated stretching. Um, but basically, um, when you want to stretch out a muscle, it, you know, it could be shortened because it's tight and you've overworked it, or it could be shortened because it just is not engaging anymore. It's not moving, it's not stretching, it's not shortening, it's just not active. It could be really weak, um, or it could be just bound up and it has a knot or uh, muscle adhesion. So, um, so kind of moving things around um, dynamically, um, you have a couple issues when you're stretching. So there's the what's called the myotatic reflex. So that's just an involuntary uh, reflex of the muscles. Um, a good way of explaining it is you, if your body starts to lean one way, the opposite side will kind of feel a stretch, like kind of the end of a tension kind of. And so once it feels that, it'll involuntarily spring you back so it kind of corrects what's going on, right? So that's kind of a basic way of explaining it. Uh, but it's a reflex to keep you from injuring yourself. It's to protect yourself. So if you were, you know, stretching out your quad and you go too far and your body doesn't like it, it doesn't feel good for it, the quad will actually kind of contract a little bit. It'll keep you from going too far. It'll make you kind of stop. So uh, you don't want to do too much because you can damage it. Um, so just going as far as it feels good and then kind of moving in with the active isolated stretching, um, resisting it a little bit more, feeling like you have some control there and then kind of breathing out and sinking into a little bit further. Usually it'll go further without you having to really jerk it and force it and go past that myotatic reflex. Um, so you're not going to injure it. So now we're going to go into um, some dynamic stretching and a little bit of active isolated stretching as well. Um, so we're going to be using kind of that reciprocal inhibition, which just basically means um, if you want to stretch one muscle or you want to lengthen one muscle, you need to shorten the opposing muscle group. 
Um, so you can do it by actively shortening the other muscle group um, or resisting and relaxing kind of thing. Um, so actively doing it. Or you can do it passively. You can use like a towel um, or a band, which is what I'm going to be using. So um, for a basic hip flexor stretch, um, you can do the kneeling hip flexor stretch. So I'm going to be stretching here. Um, so you can just, you can either, you know, be somewhere where you can lean on something, a wall, stabilize yourself if you have to. But we're focusing on this leg behind you. If you need a pillow under your knee too, go for it, whatever feels comfortable. Um, so you want to make sure when you're doing this stretch, your knee is over your, your foot, your ankle. Um, so going forward more, right, will kind of, uh, give you that bowed effect here. You can feel that stretch, but again, you don't want to go past what feels comfortable for you because you don't want to do damage. Um, so to make this a little bit more dynamic, right? You can kind of move in and out of it. You can do it with your breath. Kind of like warms it up. Um, if you want it to be a little bit more active, isolated, you can push down on this leg here which will kind of um, like kind of tilt your pelvis forward and even just doing that and contracting your glutes a little bit more, right? So doing that re uh, the reciprocal inhibition part of it, right? If you want to stretch this or lengthen this, you want to shorten this. So just kind of doing that with your breath, you can feel a stretch in the front. So you would want to go two seconds on and then off, release. Two seconds on, and then release. Just kind of do that till it feels good. You can do it 10 times a side and switch. Um, so if you want to go deeper, this is where you can use like a towel or a band or something. So if you want to move this stretch, if you might be feeling it down here, basically with any of these stretches, you're going to feel it where you're the tightest. So. Um, you know, when you're like, oh, I don't feel it here, I feel it down here. Well, you're probably more bound up and tight down here than you are up here. So if you generally, if you want to move this stretch up a little bit higher, you can take a band or a towel and you can just kind of lift that up a little bit. So that definitely shifted for me from here to a little bit more up here. Um, and the pillow probably wouldn't hurt right about now. Um, then the next one is going to be, again, a dynamic one where you're kind of moving. So go to tabletop here and still working with that same reciprocal inhibition idea. You're going to lift your leg up. So you're going to be contracting your glutes and hamstrings to stretch the front of your hip. So you kind of want to make sure you have a flat, stable back here and then kind of tuck it in to relax the hip flexors a little bit or shorten them, put some slack in it. And then just keep doing that arch. You can go further and further as you feel kind of some blood flow and movement in that area. So this just kind of feels good in the hip capsule, in the joint itself too, just kind of moving it around. Um, so that one is good there. And another one you can do, this is kind of a glute, hip flexor, hip complex kind of a stretch. All you yogis out there probably know this one, the pigeon stretch. So you have one hip like elongated and extended and the other one more internally rotated and uh, uh, flexed forward. So this side, I'm stretching my glutes. Um, and some people might feel um, maybe some sciatica pain where your sciatic nerve is getting pinched off by a deep glute muscle, the piriformis. So this kind of helps out that part of it too, um, stretching that and the glutes. But you can feel this kind of on the outside of your hip on one side and the front or more the inside of the opposite. And then you can switch 
And again, if you want to deepen this one, two, you can put a band or a towel. But you might, like, I kind of started feeling a cramp in my hamstring because, again, that re the reciprocal inhibition um, where if you want to lengthen one muscle, you're going to shorten another. So again, just kind of be careful and go where it feels comfortable for you. Um, so that one's the pigeon. Then another one that I like, this one is Spider-Man. So you have, you kind of go into a plank position and then you bring your foot next to that same side hand and then bring it back. So if you don't want to be in a plank, you can kind of be on your knees too and then move it up like that. You can kind of wiggle around in this space, whatever feels good, but that is a Spider-Man. So then um, we can move to more of an adductor stretch. So this is the butterfly. So you're gonna put the <gasps> soles of your feet together, but then kind of fan the inside of your, the bottoms of your feet up towards the ceiling. And you want to bring your feet in. If you bring your feet in closer to you, it's gonna be a deeper stretch. The further away it is, it's not gonna be as deep. Um, and you don't have to get your knees like flat on the floor or anything. It's just wherever you're at, just meet it wherever you're at. Um, so again, you can kind of do this in kind of a dynamic way if you want to, just kind of ease into it. Um, kind of like you were doing with your um, kneeling hip flexor stretch. Um, and you can do it more active, isolated, where you can kind of push down kind of resist your hands for two seconds and then relax them down and then resist them and relax it down so you can go a little bit deeper. You can deepen it by leaning forward, um, but again, wherever that feels good for you. So you should be stretching kind of that whole length um, of the adductors. So then if you wanted to get a little bit more on the outside of the hips, um, I like to do kind of that figure four and leaning it in different directions. You'll feel it kind of hit that same outside and the glutes in that area. So that'll hit kind of that IT band, TFL-ish aspect of where the hip flexors could kind of stick into the hip. So those are good. So this stretch is for the adductors as well, like the butterfly. Um, so this one you could have a, a strap or maybe a long towel, um, but I have a resistance band. Um, so you would um, kind of tilt your toes inward and come up straight. This will get a little bit more of your hamstring too here. Um, and then from here, I would rotate the toes out as you kind of make like a 90 degree angle or 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle maybe. Um, then you'll start to kind of feel it slide more towards the inside. Then gradually you want to come down straight out to the side. So this is where you'll feel that good stretch here um, in the adductors. So I'm also feeling it closer to my knee, um, more than I am in the belly of the adductor. So that probably means that I want to take like a tennis ball or a foam roller and try and see if I can loosen this fascia up. Maybe there's some scar tissue um, that's binding stuff up in there. So, um, but once I release that, focus on that a little bit more, and if I try it again, It'll probably feel a little bit smoother and I probably won't feel that tug by my knee. And those are the stretches.